Lingenfelter Performance Engineering started over 34 years ago. Uh, the company was founded by John Lingenfelter. John uh, was a, a, an engineer and loved drag racing. They built extreme high performance, extremely durable, very competitive engines. Unfortunately, John uh, was, was uh, fatally injured in a drag racing accident. He had the accident in late 2002. He passed in 2003. Ken Lingenfelter, uh, who's the current owner, is the second cousin of John Lingenfelter. Ken is an extremely passionate car person, has a, his own personal car collection of, of in excess of 150 cars. Everybody from the person that sweeps the floor to the person that, that does the CNC work on the cylinder heads, to the engine assembler, to the people that work on the cars, all share the same focus. This is our main building. We've been in this building since 1979. So uh, a lot of history in here. Sales administrative offices are over there. Cylinder head porting room is over there. Flow bench room is over there. That area there is sort of de designated valve train, cylinder head area, so you've got valve seat work, valve guide work, crank balancing, uh, piston rod prep over there, and then another three axis CNC that's used for block machining and, and that type of stuff, and then more of the block work as you go through here. Customer can send us engine. We'll build a new engine from that. A uh, customer can call us up and say, I want this engine built, and we'll build it from scratch parts. Or a customer sends us the whole vehicle, we take the engine out, rebuild the engine, put it in, or take that engine out, and that's the engine's, the customer's engine to take back and do whatever we want, so we put a whole new engine in the customer's vehicle. So we, uh, and then we do in between. Uh, we have uh, individual customers and jobbers where we might build a, a short block or a long block, and then they put the rest of their componentry on it and put it in vehicles. We do uh, cylinder heads for the majority of the GMLS type heads. Uh, so we've got a variety of raw castings here that are waiting to be CNC machined and then others that have already been CNC machined that are waiting to go get assembled. The, the new castings from GM and, and the aftermarket have gotten way better than they were 10, 20 years ago. But there's still a casting process where you're still going to have 10, 20,000 variants easily. So one of the advantages of CNCing the heads uh, is that not only can you improve the flow and change the geometry to what you want, uh, but you also can make it much more consistent from chamber to chamber, runner to runner. And that's part of the advantage that we can bring to it. I mean, obviously, GM has got incredible quality control, incredible capabilities. What they can't do is do the kind of individual hand labor that way. You know, if, if GM had to put three hours of hand porting a head intake and throttle body onto each vehicle, you know, they, they couldn't afford to build a vehicle. Purely by coincidence, we have two Cadillac CTSV coupes on here. That was not not planned. Uh, that dyno is a Dynojet inertia style chassis dyno. Uh, so we can record, we can measure up to 200 miles an hour and up to about 1200 horsepower on that. Uh, then this one here is a Mustang chassis dyno with a dual eddy current absorbers. And uh, we can go up to 250 miles an hour on this one and up to 2000 horsepower at the rear wheels. Uh, this one's got a much more extensive data acquisition system. Uh, so we can do uh, five gas emissions analyzing, we can do fuel flow. We've got uh, 16 thermocouple channels and uh, 16 analog voltage channels and uh, I think eight uh, frequency channels. So it's, it's got almost an engine dyno type data acquisition system on it. Um, we're actually on, we, we've had so many runs on it that we wore the rolls down. So this one here, uh, 427 uh, Corvette, twin, tur twin turbo. Started out, I think, 750 horse, something like that, 725. That wasn't enough. When we designed our initial 500 horsepower package that then became our 550, that then became our 600, at the, we sized it so that those same manifolds and turbos could also be uh, 725 horsepower package. So we had a, an upgrade path for those customers where now if they did internal engine modifications, forged pistons, lower compression, we could now go to more boost, put bigger fuel injectors in and make more horsepower without having to change manifolds, without having to change turbos. So they started out at the 500 or 550 and then a year or so later you get used to that much horsepower and you decide, I want the 725. So uh, the, the turbo packages have worked well for that. And, and the, similar with the supercharger packages, well the same supercharger, increase the pulley ratio, go to a 10 rib belt system to drive the, the, the supercharger at those higher loads, lower the compression with forged pistons, and now you can have 725, 750 horsepower type thing. 
So this is the primary engine assembly room. Any engine that's getting built from the ground up goes through here. Street rod, drag race, small block, big block. We do some road racing and uh, oval track, and then we do some autocross and road race engines and stuff like that, and Bonneville engines. Part of the intent of this engine, given that it's going to be in the 48-hour Camaro, that's it's going to be used for Solo 2 autocross type applications, we really wanted a broad power band. Uh, if you can avoid shifting as much as possible in that type of uh, usage is obviously an advantage. Uh, so we've got a very high RPM limit, about 7,400 RPM, 7,300 RPM, but we've got a very broad power band from 4,700 all the way to 7,300 RPM. So in, in many of the autocross type situations, depending on gearing, be able to get out of first, get into second gear, and, and may not need to leave second gear depending on the, on the type of course. Okay, what we've got up on the screen here is the final run from the 48-hour uh, Camaro build. Peak horsepower is 602 horsepower at uh, 7,200, 7,300 RPM. Peak torque was uh, 480 foot-pounds at uh, just under 6,100 RPM. We, uh, the last change we made was we uh, moved the cam. Originally it was in at 113.5 and, and we advanced the cam out to 109.5, so basically advanced the cam 4 degrees. Uh, to try to uh, broaden that power curve, move the, the peak down a little bit, and pick up the lower end torque, uh, which is what it did, so it achieved what we were looking to, to achieve. We're looking forward to see what this uh, looks like in the vehicle.